Banking, Barclays Bank PLC, Foreign Portfolio Investments, FPI as we commonly call it, a gateway of global investors to India. Satya is the Chief Executive Officer, as I rightly announced him. He started his career in project and corporate finance in India and had worked in numerous functions including finance, sales, marketing, product development, investment analysis over the past 24 years. Prior to joining Barclays, he was head of private banking in the Southeast Asia region for ICICI Bank in Singapore. He holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree from the University of Rajasthan in India and is a Chartered Accountant from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Satya is an angel, an active angel investor, having helped more than 20 startups across industries, both in India and overseas, including social impact investing. He is involved with various community initiatives and NGOs, including the Rotary Club, of Mumbai. Please join me in a round of applause to welcome him as he's presently getting mic'd up. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Sajid. Good morning, Sarja, for getting me here. Uh, I happened to meet Sajid some time back and he mentioned briefly about this whole uh, India UAE corridor. And I was very keen to, to know a little bit more about it. So some time back while I was in Dubai, I got to know a little bit more about what's happening and I thought it's a good good thing for us to connect. So thanks for uh, putting together a very interesting program and I'm sure this journey is just a beginning and there will be a lot more fruitful business will come out of this. Uh, let me first talk about why I'm here and what could be relevant for you. Uh, first and foremost, I think most of us will agree today that uh, we can't afford to ignore some growth economies and the large economies like India. We have heard enough of China by now. I think uh, everyone uh, would have spoken to you or you have done some bit of uh, business uh, already in China because we can't afford to ignore it. But if you really look at China sometime, I mean pre-90s in China today, I mean it's very different. What, what we see in China today is a development which is largely around last uh, 25 years and more so in the last 15 years after China joined WTO. Uh, if you just want to look ahead and see where India lies, it could be the next China for the global world. And there are two different reasons why you can't afford to ignore China, India for that. Because unlike China, where uh, the large amount of activity is still driven by state, India is still a private family owned uh, businesses which are driving the economy and they have been doing it more on a kind of a you can say open architecture where everyone is free to do what they like and it's a very competitive economy state intervention is far less it's a far far more open economy than possibly you would have otherwise thought and more importantly it is again a very very domestic demand driven economy I don't think uh, we are able to, we, we often compare India and China on the same basket, but it can't be compared because India, the share of export to GDP is still less than 15%. So 85% of GDP is still domestically driven, which means that the, the economy itself is, is a very vibrant and that really keeps the momentum going. So irrespective of the various market volatility that we would have come across, we have still seen a growth base level at around 6% to 6.5% level across market, uh, market cycles. And with, this, with a positive direction, which what we can possibly see with the current government pushing the accelerator uh, and, and setting the direction right, this 7.5% 7, 7 is naturally given. And if I can just simply add some more initiative which is happening in Indian context, like the recent uh, change in the GST, my personal belief and our belief is that that itself would add another 1% to 1.5% to GDP in the next two years. So we are talking of an economy next to us, next to UAE, which is, which is sizable, which is growing somewhere in the range of around 7% to 8.5%. We can debate whether what, what number you would like to. You cannot afford to ignore. There's a lot more we can do by bringing this corridor together. However, the key challenge is how to access this corridor. Now, you may be part of some large organization representing here. You may be part of some 
mid-market organizations, you have expansion plan. How do you want to tap a market like India? If that be the case, then let's first simplify the whole approach. First and foremost, uh, I would like to give you my own impression. I have I've stayed abroad enough number of years and when I came back, general impression that I get from foreign investor, India is not open. It's a very closed economy. Please don't believe in the statement if it's just somebody making it. I can give it to you based on our own experience, industry by industry. India is one of the most open economy today for global business and global investment. So, if you, whatever be the sector, I mean, including banking, which is considered to be very, uh, very close to the, I mean, which is not open, even most, the two of the biggest private sector banks are open, are, are owned by more than 70 percent by the foreign investors. You cannot have a be better, better example of the openness of the economy where the core sector is open for foreign investors, uh, this thing. If you go from a business investment perspective, it is more or less, I think, 90 percent of the sectors that you would anyway talk about are open for foreign direct investment and that to 100 percent. So it's one of the most open economy. The interesting aspect is, okay, if this is what we believe in, this is an open economy to talk, then how do we really take advantage of that openness in the economy? Now, there are two, two ways you can do that. One is you are a business investor. You have certain strategic play to make. India is open for FDI. It's a sector very wide open. In case anyone of you have got any specific interest to talk to any specific businesses or families, uh, please reach out to please reach out to our friends in IBMC, they can reach out to us. We have as Barclays a significant amount of uh, market network and we would be happy to provide the right linkages as and when you, you shout to us. We would be happy to, happy to connect you to the leaders in the specific sectors if there is anything that we could be relevant to you. Uh, we would be happy to provide the linkages both ways so in case you want to have any kind of partnership for, for, for representing any of the companies in, in UAE for that matter in case you want to reach out. I'm sure uh, our friends in IBMC can, can, can connect you there. So from a business to business connectivity perspective, FTI is, 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 is an open access, I believe, both ways and we should take advantage of it. The second question which comes is, okay, I'm not going to remain only a business investor. My objective is to basically invest in India as a market, in invest in India as an economy. How do I do it? Now, most of the Indians or those people who are in, people of Indian origin, they have a, they already have an access to the market and they have been taking advantage of it. But these questions largely come from people who are not of Indian origin or who are foreign investors. How do I access Indian market uh, to our advantage if we believe this story is going to play in the next couple of decades that well? Uh, I personally believe that uh, a large amount of UAE based investors, I'm talking about non-Indians, people of excluding people of uh, uh, Indian origin, have not taken advantage of India's investment potential in the last uh, couple of decades when markets really opened up, right from 91 to where, are, where we are today. I think I, I believe that Middle Eastern investors and particularly UA investors where there is a huge amount of capital at disposal have somehow not taken advantage of it, maybe because of lack of awareness or maybe the access was not seen to be that visible. Given the current context, any foreign investors, individual or institutional, uh, you don't need to really go through any of the structures that people generally talk about, okay, you have to come through Mauritius, you have to come through, come through Singapore and all those, all those uh, are, are history now. You as an investor can directly come to India, invest in public markets, fully repatriable, and being taxed at the same level as anybody else, including a domestic investor or a non-resident Indian would have been taxed. So there is no difference between you as a foreign investor being an individual or an institution or a family for, for a foreign office or a domestic investor like me today based in India or a non-resident Indian who would be in any part of the world, there is no tax treatment which is different to anybody. You don't need to create any of these wrappers, any of these uh, kind of a, a structures which generally people have been used to in the past. So India as an economy, as I mentioned, is very open for business, but India as a market is equally open uh, to, to, to receive you uh, 
and to do that. And let me also tell you, it's not only that taxation rules have been simplified now, more importantly, the access has been simplified. Uh, today, a foreign investor, I'm talking about a foreign family office or a foreign individual for that matter, can come to Indian market, get himself, herself, or itself registered in less than 10 days and get going with it. If it requires more than that, I would be a little surprised. So it's a very open access economy and open access market. I would like you to take advantage of it in the best possible manner. In case you need any help, uh, you can reach out to uh, IBMC or you can reach out to uh, any, any, of the, any of the service providers in the domestic market uh, and we would be happy to provide you any more market information in case you need it. Just to, just to give you a little glimpse of what is happening with the foreign portfolio investors now, this, this FPI thing which I believe uh, uh, some of our fellow panelists will talk in greater detail. I, I really didn't want to get into repeat of that or preempt their, their uh, detailed session on, on the foreign portfolio investor. But foreign portfolio investors, once you register yourself as an FPI, the entire public market is accessible to you and uh, net of tax, every money is fully repatriable to you. And uh, that you cannot have a more simplified process than what it is currently today. So that's where I think most of the action lies. What we need to really now look at it, do we really want to, do you really believe in the story which is unfolding in front of us? If you want to take advantage of it, what is the right way to do it? Because for, for a business investor, looking for a strategic tie-up, looking for a foreign direct investment route and looking for an investment in India or looking for an investment outside of India would be more relevant. For a portfolio investor, obviously the market access is very important and you can, you can also play both of them. Given the large pool of capital that UAE uh, uh, as, 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 as a network has and the opportunity they have been seeking, it's a, it's a great momentum. I'll give you an example, the things, the way it's rapidly changing. Look at what is happening to the, just to give you an example, road sector. India, as, as we know, is still trying to build infrastructure. Infrastructure, there is enough demand, you just need to put the infrastructure in place. In the last three years, the vibrancy in the road sector is, is beyond imagination. Why I'm saying so? Because today, the construction speed, daily construction of, uh, of, 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 of national roads has already gone up from almost like 10 kilometers a day to it's almost like 30 kilometers a day. And the government is now talking to almost 50 kilometers a day. And the recent success of, uh, of, of, uh, of institutionalization of funding in the road sector through INVITS, institutional participation, is a clear example of the opportunity uh, which is being seized by investors, not only by investors who understand road sector, but the people who want to participate. So you are all familiar with the REITs here in, 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 in this part of the world. Now the road sector REITs, which is what is called the INVITS, have come and the amount of success that we had in one recent issue which we had is a clear example of institutionalizing the opportunity for investors. Look at the way uh, the power sector reforms have happened, particularly look at the solar, uh, I mean, uh, we, we can talk about some of these things in as much detail, I, I believe we are falling short of time. So uh, look at what has happened in the solar, solar sector. Uh, it has become one of the most vibrant uh, place. So most of the, uh, you can say, solar players globally are coming to India and talking about various things they can do. They are not only talking about on-grid solar, but they are also talking about off-grid solar. And the price point today, people have been talking about grid parity in solar. Means where the, when I say grid parity means the price of the, Solar will be at par with any other, any other uh, source of, uh, of fuel that you can think of it. Today, solar prices in India are almost like three and a half rupees, which is per, per unit. I think this is almost at par than other sources of power that we can think of it. And, and India is becoming now one of the most disruptive play in the solar space by bringing down the cost continuously. And the prices of solar power has come down from as high as 16 rupees till few years back, about five years back, to almost like three rupees. So we already achieved like 80% reduction of the cost of solar power in India. And because of the sheer scale it operates, it is able to provide uh, the, the massive opportunity to global investors, both the technology players as well as the investors. 
I can go on and talk about sector after sector, but my, my limited point is that given the size of the domestic market itself and the growth momentum that India currently is going through, for any business investor or a foreign portfolio investor to stay away from it, it may not be a great idea. So you have to calibrate your response to the opportunity and take advantage of it. I really don't want to rattle more about it. I would be happy to take any questions or comments that you may, you may like to have so that we can make it a little more interactive. So please go ahead, audience. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for the informative speech. Uh, the question is that uh, we have mentioned that India is open and uh, it is a very open economy right now and foreign investment is welcome there. And uh, the recent uh, initiative which Government of India has taken is the QFPA, the Qualified Foreign Portfolio Investment. Uh, the question is that whether a foreign national, for example, a UAE national, he can open a bank account in, in an Indian bank back in India and do the investment directly? Or a company here registered irrespective of the origin, like uh, any foreign company who is having a registered entity in UAE, whether they can open an account in Indian bank and directly do the investment. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's a very interesting question. So any foreign national, an individual, or a company owned by foreign nationals can open their bank account and ha handle investment through that in India. In fact, uh, uh, quite a few... Uh, foreign individuals on their own, they would, they would like to set up their FPI account with a foreign portfolio investor. And uh, a foreign portfolio investor could be an individual or could be a corporate or could be any other structure that they have overseas. Uh, as long as it can be KYC, which is a normal KYC in the banking system and the rest of the banking regulations can be taken care of, the account can be opened uh, like any other do domestic resident account. So, I mean, any, any, any foreign individual uh, can can open take advantage of FPI and and get get himself herself or or, or or themselves registered as part of that. That's the reason I'm saying the process has made so simple that you can directly access the market like any other resident Indian or any other non-resident Indian would have accessed it. And as I mentioned again, I'm repeating it that the taxation that you have is no different than the taxation a resident Indian would have or for that matter a non-resident Indian would have. So absolutely there is no difference between Indian and non-Indian so far as domestic market access is concerned as well as uh, the, the market, uh, you can say the, the commercial uh, part that is the tax part of the market is concerned. And why this has become attractive? See for an investor who is investing, let's say Indian equity market if you are investing for more, investing and you want to, hold, you are holding the investment for more than a year. It's considered to be a long-term holding and there is zero tax on long-term holding. So why, why the need for doing anything, any of the Mauritius thing and any of the, the kind of a structures that people used to have it? Long-term capital gain tax right now in India is zero on so far as equity holding is concerned. So it's as good as zero taxation for you. If it is short-term in nature, there is a bit of taxation, but that's again very small. It's less than 15% less than now. But that's part of it, like any domestic investor would also pay tax on any, for anything that you trade within a year, which is fine. So there is no differentiation between a domestic investor or long term uh, or, 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 or a foreign investor. And, and the process is very simplified. It's fully repatriable. Uh, so you mean to say that uh, a UA national or a company based in UA right now, if they want to invest, they can open bank account in India and yes. they will be first transferring the funds to their own bank account back in India. Yes. And from there the investment is going. So it is a fully secured route which the government is offering. The bank account is going to be in the name of the individual or the or the company in your own control. There's no and you can pull it out any moment of your choice. There are no restriction on that. Any amount of money. It could be as small as five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, could be as big as five hundred billion dollars. There are no restrictions on it. But to open the bank account, the PAN cards and everything is required back in India now. So the foreign national will get a PAN card as well? Yeah. So uh, what typically the process happens is that uh, the process, I'm sure, do you have a session on uh, from our, uh, some of the fellow panelists on the FPI side? We can cover it, but I'll just give it to you. So any national would like to have it, they basically establish a relationship with the custodian. The custodian does all the job. They open the bank account, they open the all the investment account and everything. You just need to uh, talk to a custodian and they will do it. Uh, we as a bank, we as a Barclays or for that matter, any other bank uh, which is authorized in India, they, are, they would be happy to provide all the banking and the related settlement services to, to, the, to the respective individual or the institution for that matter. 
So it's a very easy, I'm telling you it's, a, it's easy. It, it doesn't take for it doesn't take more than seven days to 15 days for, for, for the investors to start. So can I add to this, a trade license would obviously need to be presented as well for a UAE business owner having a business, a trading business or any business in the UAE. Uh, not really. Uh, this is not uh, nothing to do with the trade. It's like any other individual, including you, yes. uh, saying that I would like to invest in Indian market. You're most, most, most welcome and start within 15 days. Interesting. Open to NRIs, OCIs across the board. Yeah, yeah. So NRI, OCI already yes. already had that yes. option. Yes. Now this option is being enlarged to anybody outside of that. So you for that matter. I believe you hold you based in Netherlands. Uh, for that matter, any of our friends here in the audience who are uh, who are UAE national for that matter, or any other nationality, they are as welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the technical difference between FDI and FPI? Is there is any difference? Okay, so uh, basically, FDI is a foreign direct investment. Let me just expand it. FPI is a foreign portfolio investment. Uh, when it comes to FPI, you are investing in public markets. So the stocks or debentures or, or the securities are available and traded in public market. Any investment being done in publicly traded securities is, gener is comes under the definition of FPI, foreign portfolio investor. So any, any one of us for that matter, any of the foreign investors, they are welcome to be an FPI investor and invest in the Indian market. However, uh, when it comes to investing in the private market, private market means suppose there is somebody who is already having a business of solar manufacturing and you want to take a stake in that, then that is considered in the category of FDI investment and in that case the sectoral rest restriction will apply. So when it says if the solar is an industry, what is the sectoral cap for a foreign investor to invest in? So if there is a sectoral cap, you have to go by the sectoral cap. So in case of solar for that matter, there are no sectoral cap. So you can invest 100% of the business can be owned by you. In case of defense, any defense related industry, there is a sectoral cap that you cannot own more than 49%. So I think most of the businesses that I believe that be it a hospitality, be it, uh, be it most of the businesses which are non-sensitive in nature are open for 100% FDI in India. So for, for, the, for UAE as a business community, it could be a great opportunity for FDI investment to take a business stake or to see if there is some more businesses which they can like to take out from India and expand it globally by using the UAE network here or FPI opportunities both ways. But what I am saying is if you are not able to freeze on FDI, at least take advantage of FPI because FDI takes time. You have to go and scan the market. which, which whom you want to partner, to what extent you want to partner, on what terms you want to partner. But here FPI is available and you, all of you can individually start taking advantage of it. Okay, one last question please. I have one question. That is banking perspective. Banking officials are also here. See, considering FPA, IBMC is initiating to start FPA desk at various banks, foreign banks. So. Considering you as a leading uh, banking official, if we are linking UAE and India banks to bank, bank to bank, and linking the investors to investment, so how can they able to root these kind of things? Because banking sector, they are directly taking that funds from the local investor. They are trusting local bank. Yeah. So they want to, on behalf of these investors, they want to invest into this FPA route, whether it is possible or not. So uh, I think uh, it's a very simple process. I believe all the investors that we are talking to, they would anyway be banking with one or the other local banks in UAE for that matter. Uh, for that investor to enter India, they need to get themselves registered as an FPI investor. And the process of registration is a single window registration. For that, you also don't need to go to the regulator and get yourself registered. The agencies which are doing it, and agencies are like custodians, they, they do it. And, 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 or, or you can reach out to any of the banks which are authorized for this and they will open, they will make the entire process seamless for you and from whichever bank that you are banking with here in UAE, you can remit the money and get the money back to your respective bank account. So very simple process, uh, you can try it with 
in whatever manner that you feel is appropriate. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a business for, uh, for, for the banks on both sides because there would be some banking business happening in this side with every remittance is going out, every remittance is coming in, and there would be some business for uh, the banks on the other hand. And the taxation part is very simple as I mentioned to you. So there is no difference, uh, as I told you, for a domestic investor or foreign investor so far the taxes and rates are concerned. And the process has also been simplified where the custodians whom you appointed as part of FBI single window clearance, they will take care of your taxes and related settlement if there is any tax due. 